welcome to the property show and parking unique opportunities available in satellite towns. Today, we focus on a comprehensive development in the fast growing Raqqa neighborhood, surrounded by affluent shopping facilities, excellent schools, luxury hotels and restaurants, as well as transport links, all within easy reach. The accessory spot with do-it-yourself tips on soft furnishes. This is a spray paint bottle decor. You just buy the spray paint from a hardware. Then you take your bottle, you just spray. On our home ownership segment, we catch up with a young professional on her exciting journey. I would advise someone if they want to go for a fixed contract, not to, they, you would rather go for a labor or you look for a fund who has done a property, you deal with them because you'll be able to buy what you need from the market, you'll take what you like. There's so much lined up for us today. Connect with us on our social media platforms and let's talk. As always, there is something for everyone. Today, we focus on the fast-growing Raqqa town, the small rural center known for its major security challenges. This town has evolved to a fast-growing suburb just 30 minutes away from the CBD and is home to a vibrant middle-income community. Raqqa town borders Denderu, Roslyn and Runda estates with a good transport network system connecting to the city centre via Limuru Road, Thika using Muthaiga route or the newly constructed bypass and Limuru town. The town is located 13 kilometres from Nairobi city with two prime commercial retail developments within its vicinity, two rivers and the Roslyn Riviera Mall. town has it all, from an excellent supply of transport links, neighboring top retail outlets, hotels, restaurants, schools, embassies, and the UN headquarters, which further tighten security across the town. You name it, and they've got it. Our property pick of the week takes us to this fast-growing town, to a breath of fresh air, modern contemporary development, with a combination of live, work and play community, the Alma. This mixed-use gated community of one, two and three bedroom apartments is a masterpiece and a unique investment opportunity for those looking for a place to call home as well as investors. Alma is a residential apartment development located in Ruaka. It comprises of one, two and three bedroom apartment units. In terms of the complete offering, it hosts nine apartment blocks uh, spanning between 8 to 12 floors. Cumulatively, that is 477 units. It also has a retail facility and a nursery school. The unique amenities that we have uh, include the elevated playing grounds on the first floor level. Uh, this will act as uh, breakout spaces for the residents and also playing grounds for the children. We also have rooftop gardens on the upper floors that are relaxation spaces for our residents. Uh, 
uh, we have water from two sources that is Karuri water and Nairobi water so the borehole water will just uh, be that extra amount of water in case there's any shortage so the underground water tanks that we have then we'll be able to act as reserve uh, tanks for the water just in case of any shortage within the development. We have high-speed lifts uh, within each of the blocks, two number per block. So those are some of the most uh, unique features that we have in the Alma. And um, lastly, we have the swimming pool that will be shared by the residents. At the Alma, we have 24-hour security surveillance. Uh, so we shall install CCTV in each of the blocks. And as well, within the, each of the entry points, we shall have uh, manned gates. So we shall deploy security personnel at each of the entry points to improve security. What we did is we provided solar water heaters uh, for each of the three bedroom apartments. Uh, so this is just one of the ways that we could think of uh, to creatively convert uh, solar energy uh, for home use. That was also in compliance to the government uh, regulations. We are targeting two groups of people. One were the investors. Um, Raqqa area historically has been known to offer returns of up to 28%. We have 23% capital appreciation and 5% uh, yield, so that is cumulatively 28. So it's a good offering for investors. Secondly, we were looking at people who would like a home to live in with their families. So we've mentioned the amenities that we have at the Alma and the units are very spacious. The environment that we have uh, created is good for also people who are looking for a home environment. The rental lead that you're looking at is about 5% average for each of the one, two and three bedroom apartment units. So the 23% uh, capital appreciation that I was talking about, that is capital appreciation on the land. Uh, so you'll find uh, any investor that uh, bought into the Alma initially, the returns that they've been able to make over the years is approximately that 28%. The initial prices that we had for the Alma were about 4.95. Currently the Alma is selling for 6.3. So the rents that we had for the one bedroom apartments uh, have grown from about 25,000 per month to between 35,000 to 45,000 per month depending on the class of development that you have. So if you work this out, this is what is working out to the 5% uh, rental yield. Uh, the service charge ranges from about 3,000 per month to uh, 5,000 depending on the type of unit that you have bought. So we are starting with 3,000 per month for the one bedroom apartments and working our way up as we uh, grow in terms of apartments. And this service charge is what is going to cover maintenance for the common areas. Right now site on properties will be the facilities manager for the development. This is a three bedroom apartment at the Alma. Uh, once you enter, uh, the room opens up onto the uh, dining area. As you can see, it is very spacious. You can set up a table of up to 10 people. And then it is framed by uh, down lighters. So the wall provide a perfect backdrop for some of your art pieces. We shall be providing the chandeliers at the lounge area and also at the dining area. So you can see uh, in real form what we shall be offering to our clients. Uh, this is the lounge, um, again, very spacious, and it opens up to the balcony area uh, that is framed by aluminum uh, sliding doors. So beyond there, uh, we have a glass uh, balustrade that opens up now uh, to what we were saying at the elevated playing grounds. In terms of uh, finishes, um, our walls will be painted white as you see so clients will have the choice of in terms of finishes of whether they would like to uh, do other paint colors for our floors we shall be providing a laminate flooring which is a kind of pvc finish uh, that has a wooden feel if we proceed to the bedroom areas um, here we have one of the two bedrooms uh, that share a common bathroom. So this is uh, bedroom number one and bedroom number two. And at this uh, space here, we have the common uh, bathroom. the 
very end of the house, we have the master bedroom um, that is and so, so as you open the door, uh, it opens up to the bathroom space that has a shower area, it has a toilet and also a sink. The shower area is also sort of uh, framed by uh, frameless uh, glass. So this is the master bedroom. As you can see, finishes are uh, the same all around. We have our walls painted white and we have the laminate flooring for our floor finish. The room is quite spacious again and we have uh, aluminum uh, framed windows. We also have ample uh, wardrobe space with more than enough storage space uh, for the residents in the house. So this is the kitchen space. Uh, we have uh, fitted cupboards, um, more than enough uh, storage space at the bottom level and also at the top level. I think what we can really appreciate about this kitchen are the accent lights below uh, the cupboards, which uh, light up maybe if you have appliances or if you'd like to uh, cut things for those who, who love cooking and uh, like to see what they're doing. And the kitchen opens up to a kitchen yard. Um, finished with ceramic tiles. This is the space where you can uh, do your laundry or do some washing at the Adobe space. And uh, we've also provided some uh, cupboards for storage. Alma is an unparalleled development in Ruaka. Uh, if you look around, there's no development that offers the amenities that we are offering, the level of finishes that we are offering. So in terms of uh, amenities and finishes, we are providing a superior product. So anyone looking to invest in Ruaka, this is the place to be. like about this development is their impeccable finishes, exceptional amenities, large windows, sitting areas with a lot of natural light. This is where convenience meets comfort. impressive project in this fast-growing Ruaka neighborhood is Palace Apartments, a modern, elegant residential development of two-bedroom units. Let's find out what more is on offer. The two bedroom apartments blend luxury and utility to meet your modern housing needs. Accommodation includes a spacious living room with unique finishes and also large windows that let in natural light. The kitchen has a unique design that adds a different touch to the house and is also fitted with granite tops, extractor hoods and cupboards that serve as a storage unit. Ensuite master bedroom with spacious inbuilt wardrobes, sufficient for storage and large windows that allow in light. Shiny wood parquet flooring and mahogany doors. Salient features include 24-hour security and CCTV, gate to house intercom, DSTV and Zuku installed, solar water heaters and boho. Our 
our final destination in this one sleepy town that has emerged to be the bedroom of city dwellers is Haven Park. Luxurious one, two and three bedroom apartments with a rooftop lounge, fully equipped gym and detailed high-end finishes. Here is more. Accommodation includes spacious sitting room, open plan kitchen with granite tops, plenty of storage space in the kitchen, common washroom, utility room, master ensuite, large wardrobes in all bedrooms, large balconies and windows for sufficient lighting. Salient features include perimeter wall with electric fence, 24 hour security guards, 24 hour CCTV surveillance, ample parking, lifts, ready internet, DSTV plugged in, residence rooftop lounge, backup borehole and generator, kids play area, swimming pool and fully equipped operational gym with sauna and steam. project can be a long and tedious process and the success of all projects entirely depends on the team. Next, a highlight of the role of a project manager and how they make the construction process seamless. Most of the clients in Kenya do not have that technical know-how of what to do with their project but they want to do a development but they do not have the expertise to know we are supposed to put this here, we are supposed to put this there, and all these nitty gritties that come into the construction. So the project manager actually is the client's representative in the project. In the initial concept of a project, a client would come to, let's say, to us and tell us, uh, I have an acre in uh, a certain location and I would like to put this and this up. So we sit down with the client, the client gets as creative as possible. I want this, I want this, uh, I want a high-rise building, glass cladding, I want a rooftop, I want a helipad, I want all these things that the client dreamt about or visualized that would actualize what they want, their dream. As a project managers, our work is to walk with the client through the project from the initial concepts of the brief which is provided to the architect. So we sit down with the client, get a brief from the client of what they would want, then the first step is to do a feasibility study. A feasibility will tell you, you have a piece of land here. The zoning regulations state that you can only do this and this. The use of your land, maybe it's an agricultural land, it's commercial, uh, it's a single dweller or multi-dweller. This will tell you that the client wants a high rise in a zoning regulation for a single dwelling unit. So this will not be possible. So the project manager, in the initial concept, even before you go to the architect and tell them, please design this and this for me, the feasibility study will be able to tell you the, the type of soil, what you would expect when you go to the building, the type of building that you would bring up to the client, things like the nature of the place, expected uh, projections of the place, because you will find that a client wants to put uh, an apartment for sale or for rent, let's say on Dennis Street Road or Irwin's Codec. Then you will find that uh, in the client, whatever they want, the standards that they want to bring there are either too high or too low. This affects greatly in the cost, because if you find an apartment on Dennis Street Road, you expect the finishes are of high end. Uh, I suppose you would go to Eastlands and find the apartments there that really do not match the standards that you would find on the other side. So if a client wants to bring up an apartment for rent or for sale, they would come and tell us this is what we have, this is the kind of money that we are looking to invest in the project. And with that we will be able to guide them through the process of you can do up to this stage, you can do up to this stage, these are the consultants we need, these are the documentations we need, 
A good project manager will tell the client in the initial stage, what you want cannot be actualized. Or if you have an, uh, an acre on Dennis Spritz or Alex Codec and you want to put your residential house for you to live, as a project manager, I would advise you not to do that. I would advise you do a high-rise building, a multi-dweller. It will get you more capital. You can buy an acre somewhere else and build your residential house comfortably. But if it's in the outskirts of Nairobi, where the nature of the surroundings is single dwelling units for families, homes, and all that, I would advise you to do this. But when it comes to the commercial side of the business, because the project manager is there to make sure that the client gets their value for money and that their investment get them returns that they want. So if you're doing an apartment for sale, you expect that your returns will be much more than what you invested in. So the project manager will tell you that we will do this and this is the much expected return we should get. Uh, this is how much we should put in. Uh, these are the uh, consultants that we will involve. Because as a client, you really don't want to get into going to each and every consultant. Let's say the architect's office is in Westlands, the structural engineers is in Upper Hill, the quantity surveyors is somewhere in Thicker Road. You see, that's a lot of hassle for the client. But what a good project manager does, has a team of consultants. Like, let's say you walk into Tower House. We have architects, we have structural engineers, we have quantity surveyors, we have electrical engineers. So it's a one-stop shop for everything that you would require. Are you an expert in the industry? and would like to share your expertise on this platform, just drop us a line and we'll be happy to engage. Next, updates on what's brewing in the real estate market, property news. We are here today because we are showcasing the project. We usually have quarterly updates for our clients, so we tell them what we expect the market outlook will be, and we also give them updates on our company products and basically our real estate products every quarter. I wanted to go back to the issue of facing, and my concern is this. Uh, block A, B, and G, we have been told, will be handed over at the end of this year. Are they being handed over for our occupancy? If they are, are they going to be habitable given the ongoing construction, the risks, the equipment moving around, the noise pollution? If you look at the layout of A, B, and G, they are all the first three blocks on that side. So we'll actually screen it off. And that side, that the first half of the development will not have access to the bottom half. All the noisy work will essentially be done. Uh, so for the rest of the blocks, all we'll be doing will, will be inside works. If you look at this development, it has five different access points. So A, B, and G will be, access, will be accessing through the back uh, entrance. They will never be on this particular side. Uh, the power will be there, water will be there. The only issue we are going to have is the issue of uh, the biodigester. It will not be ready. So we've rented a plot on this particular side to actually do a septic tank that will be used temporarily as we work on the biodigester. So pretty much all the facilities to make it habit habitable or to rent it out will essentially be done and we can go through all the details. There's a detailed program of works for the sectional uh, handover. My question is on your uh, high yield uh, solution plus the project notes. I, I see in the communication that you're in track to have it licensed by CMA. I'm not so sure how far that is, but also how that can assist uh, the confidence of the investors. Because I know uh, when, when, when a product is licensed by one of the regulators, it reinforces uh, just confidence in some people. So I don't know how quickly that can happen so that uh, some questions can, can get answered. 
Now, remember once a product is regulated, you have to uh, deliver it according to a standardized template as defined by the regulator. Now, the regulator has a standardized template because they don't want to have different products for different people. There are some returns that are very hard to access based on a standardized template. That's why there's always private markets or alternative markets and public markets. So I'll give you an example. If a product is regulated and it's a unit trust product, the regulations say you can only have up to 25% of the funds in a specific asset class. So clearly, HYS or CPN that has 70% in real estate would not fit in the under regulated template. The reason why this is taking time, we are also discussing with them the waiver for how much we can put in any one asset class. This is going to be how much you have to hold in liquid assets. So once we move HYS under regulation, one thing that will happen for sure, it's just a, much, a matter of by how much, the rates will come down. I think it's going to be it's going to move from let's say one year 18% to let's say 14%. However, um, distribution of private products is a statutory right. It is in the CMA Act. We have the right to do it. That's why we still do it up to today, as long as we do it according to statute. So we shall always have an unregulated high yield product. Uh, right now it looks like CPN will end up being the unregulated one. HYS will end up being the regulated one. So an investor will then have a choice. Do I then invest in regulated HYS? I get 14% per annum. Or do I invest in CPN and I get 18% per annum? The projects are still the same. It's just a question of how much can you allocate in real estate under the regulated, how much can you allocate in real estate under the unregulated. Uh, so going back to a word that Charles used, it's more a perception, but there's no additional um, assurances that the regulator is going to give you. The best assurance is what we do here on a quarterly basis. Come, ask questions, look around, check around and ask yourself, am I comfortable that the underlying asset class, because Cyton can't pay you, I can't pay you, what can pay you are these properties? Are these properties selling? What is this? What is the pre-sales rate for each of the blocks? Look at where it was last quarter, this quarter. Understand why either it's uh, uh, gone up or staying at the same level. So I'm just trying to encourage you: don't over rely on regulation. Rely on due diligence and the quarterly update meetings. Property Show Signature Bus Tour in conjunction with D Square Ventures. Laikipia Plains have been termed the millionaire's playground for a good reason. Recently, the area has seen a boom in the real estate sector as developers are attracted by the area's natural attractions that include Mount Kenya, the Abadares, Loidaiga Hills, as well as game reserves such as Al Pajeta, El Karama, Borana and Lewa. Add to this the mild weather and you have the perfect recipe for serious real estate development. If you are looking to be a part of this buzzing environment, join us on our signature bus tour as we visit site and service land schemes and have fun adventures, transport, meals, book your seat today. developer breaking ground for a new project or perhaps needs to share updates on an upcoming open day expo and other real estate milestones this is where we announce what's happening in the world of real estate just drop us a line and we'll be happy to shine a light on you we're taking a short break 
We'll be back with do-it-yourself tips on soft furnishing. These flowers, they are made from glass. You just cut glass, you dry them, then you spray paint them. Then you have your flowers. An inspiring home ownership story from a young professional. The ambience is, is awesome. Uh, I come from Kitale. I was looking for a place that could make me feel like uh, like home, like I'm in Kitale, and this was it. And much, much more. Don't go away, we'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. You're watching The Property Show. We all desire beautiful, pleasant spaces. Next, the accessory spot with do-it-yourself tips on soft furnishings. We all need a beautiful space, a beautiful home, and sometimes when constructing a house it is financially draining so I decided to have things that we can make in the comfort of our homes without using so much money I do with soft furnishing that is bottle deco mats we have spray paint bottle deco then we have the flowers ideally these are bottles that we throw away at home now you can take these bottles, you just buy knitting thread, then there is the fabric glue, then you start, you start going round, 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 and you are through. You can write any word, that is joy, love, hope, any word, even your own name, you can write any word using this bottle decor. Then we have the flowers. These flowers, they are made from glass. You just cut glass, you dry them, then you spray paint them. Then you have your flowers. It's very simple. You can just take 10 minutes and you are through. Yeah, and you can make any color you want because these leads come with different colors. We have bathroom mats, we have corridor mats, we have the toilet set, so it depends on the size of the mat you want to make. If it is for the doormat, you just take one day, that is you buy tapestry, then knitting thread, then a crochet. Then you can crochet your mat. This is a spray paint bottle deco. You just buy the spray paint from a hardware. Then you take your bottle, you just spray and you are done. Be creative, come with your own design, the colors you want. That is the beauty part of it. Any color you want. These materials, we have them in our homes. They are readily available, like for the bottles. Every household has a bottle. But most of us, we throw them away. They are trash. So you can take that bottle and decorate your home. designer with creative innovative ways to furnish a home just give us a call and we'll be happy to feature your product next the home ownership segment with an inspiring story from a young professional who took the risk of buying a plot overcoming the challenges of the process and constructing a beautiful home let's hear more
I'm a property advisor. I advise clients to take mortgage to buy homes. So uh, I've been doing this for the past four years and it inspired me and decided that the rent I pay, I can still invest it somewhere and own property. So that is how I came up with the idea of owning a home. At first I looked for land because I had decided I really want to go for, for construction. I started looking for land and uh, during weekends we used to visit uh, uh, so many places like we went to Kangundo Road then I decided I do not want to, to reside there. Uh, the other day we went to Kiseria and then one of the Sundays uh, my sister was invited by my aunt who resides here to come and check out property, this land that was prime that was being sold here. So we came uh, and she brought us here. My sister was the one buying because by then it wasn't in my mind that uh, it, it is the time that I had settled for to, to buy land. So when we came here, I really liked the place. You see, you have an option of purchasing an apartment that is ready. You can always construct or buy from someone who already purchased. So I decided I wanted construction because construction, you can decide what you want. Maybe with the rooms, uh, the amenities of your house, you decide everything that you want. After we visited uh, here, uh, the next day I called um, a valuer that I know and told him that I'm interested in buying a property and at least we need to do due diligence, uh, the search. So he did a search and after a week he told me the land is okay. After the valuer assured me that the land is okay, uh, I went ahead and uh, looked for a friend who knows more about construction. We met, I already had a plan, a bungalow, a three bed bungalow. So we met and he discouraged me from doing a bungalow. I mean, the property industry, how can you just go on and do a bungalow? Yeah, so he encouraged me to do a marionette. My vision was a, a four bedroom house with an open plan kitchen. All the four bedrooms are in suit. As you can see around, the ambience is, is awesome. Uh, I come from Kitale. I was looking for a place that could make me feel like uh, like home, like I'm in Kitale, and this was it. When you want to own a home, there are a few costs that you need to you need to incur. Number one is the legal. You pay stamp duty to the government. For this side, is is two percent because it's freehold. It's not in town, and then you have to look for a valuer to value the the land. You also pay a valuer. Then uh, you have to look for for a lawyer to do the transaction of the title deed. From the costings, I took uh, plot purchase and construction mortgage that uh, is normally 100%. But since my home was a bit slightly expensive, I had to chip in a bit of my savings. The biggest challenge is when we started after the foundation, uh, the stone uh, that was used to do seven courses. Seven courses is, the, is, is like my height. Huh? The stone that was used then was a soft stone. So it wasn't a, a, a stone that one could recommend somebody to use in construction. So I had traveled to Kitale. The fundies sent me photos to check out and see they had done the first floor wall. I sent them to my valuer. Then he told me to tell them to stop because the stone was not looking good. So he told me to travel immediately, come check out the stone. So I traveled on 31st, came to Nairobi. Uh, the next day I was here uh, with them, with the, with the contractors now. I looked at the stone. I told them I'll take three, because uh, the valuer told me to take the stones to a lab for testing. So I took the stones to, to a lab and tested. The recommended strength of a stone is seven. The stone tested three. So I just had to tell them to do away with it. We started again. My project is 90% to completion. I was meant to finish on September 4th. They were, we were to do the handing over from the contractor. But unfortunately, the parting way with the contractor before completion has been a challenge. Uh, the challenge has been uh, when you deal with a contractor, you, uh, they raise a valuation, then you pay them upon. So we sat and agreed uh, 
by fourth there's a financial plan to to pay them i disbursed money to them but unfortunately when i came back after a week nothing had been done initially if i had uh, told uh, an engineer that i want to do a fixed contract and a friend engineer of course they would have discouraged me uh, because labor contract you save you save time once someone does their bit you go to the next step you can source for materials on your own yeah but this is a fixed one it's them who purchase and they do everything so i would advise someone if they want to go for a fixed contract not to they, you would rather go for a labor you source for labor or you look for a fundi who has done a property you deal with them because you'll be able to buy what you need from the market you'll take what you like and the materials that are, uh, are much better other than the fixed contract that uh, sometimes you cannot determine or uh, mitigate the time cost and quality of the materials next the property gallery with other properties available in the market away in the leafy suburbs of Runda, this four-bedroom house is set on half an acre, making it a suitable space for family living. Accommodation features include spacious living area with huge windows that allow in light and also provide a scenic view of the garden, separate dining area with access to the veranda and also has a window connecting it to the kitchen area where one can pass food from the kitchen to the dining. Large kitchen area with granite countertops which not only deliver a gorgeous aesthetic purpose, they are also of good quality and long-lasting. The kitchen also has its pantry, which is specifically designed for storage of your products. Master bedroom with state-of-the-art walk-in closet fitted with mirrors, a bathtub with toilet and shower separated with cubicles with glass doors. All bedrooms are en suite, each also having a bathtub conducive for relaxing. They also have inbuilt closets, which are efficient for storage purposes. Family or TV room upstairs, providing a beautiful space where the family can bond or even have movie nights. Social amenities include electric fence, backup generator, parking for three vehicles, fireplace at the back of the house, which can be used to provide warmth while chilling outside as you enjoy the fresh air. Office space to let, Gatondo Crescent, Kileleshwa. This four bedroom space is set on 0.8 acres. Located in a serene and secure area, this space is suitable for a law firm, advertising or film production office, or even a medical center. Features include large split reception area, which gives one a lot of space to set up reception desk and a waiting lounge. Gali Kitchen, which provides a great layout of ample built-in cabinets. The rooms are also fitted with cupboards providing sufficient storage where files or equipment can be stored. Detached, self-contained quarters and garage, spacious parking area, which is suitable for clients without the hassle of looking for where to park. Rosewood Estate consists of three bedrooms, all ensuite bungalows with a plinth area of 148 square meters. This project is set in a leafy, serene suburb away from the hustle and bustle of the city, as well as designed with modern day utilities that perfectly fit family needs. The amenities include an entry porch, spacious lounge area, an open plan kitchen which is conjoined to the dining room, a spacious pantry where you can keep your kitchen supplies, three bedrooms all en suite, built-in wardrobes providing sufficient space, separate laundry area, common cloakroom where visitors can freshen up at their own privacy, 
The house design has incorporated terracotta tones, classic lines and selected finishes including ceramic tile floors, painted or wallpapered walls, fitted cabinetry and quality sanitary wear that ensures each home is perfect for its occupants. Other salient features include electric fence for security, a large recreation area, two car parking for each individual house, children's play area, a borehole to subsidize the county water. For many of us, Finding that perfect home is the most exciting part of our journey. But I can tell you there are so many ups and downs along the way. At First Avenue, we've mastered the art of real estate and we'll be happy to hold your hand every step of the way. Thank you for watching The Property Show. Last week, I shared my personal story on the Business Daily and received overwhelming messages and feedback from my friends, colleagues, viewers, and Kenyans at large. Let me give you a snippet of my story. My pride and joy, my two beautiful daughters who are turning out to be phenomenal women. My grandson, who I fondly refer to as my sunshine. I shared my experience on being neck deep in debt and losing everything. Indeed, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I also shared the biggest lessons learned along the way. My advice to single mothers on living within our means. The people who keep me grounded, my family and friends. Finally, the one thing I regret the most is senseless friendships that I continued pursuing which I should have dropped long time ago. Friends can build you and friends can also drag you down. Thank you once again for your messages and overwhelming feedback. Until next week, Connect with us on our social media platforms for unfolding real estate trends. As always, there is something for everyone. Kwaheri! Kwaheri!